certainly online shopping has had a big impact on that. And now we're pretty well the only one that uh, travels around the stations. Yeah. Even in a widespread drought, someone, somewhere, is doing okay. The destruction Cyclone Trevor rained down on North Queensland in March, killing half a million cattle, revived drought-hit stations in the Channel Country hundreds of kilometres south. At Glengyle, near Birdsville, the floodwaters took weeks to arrive. You know, one in a couple of hundred year event those poor buggers had and, and the losses they suffered was, was pretty terrible. But um, yeah, we were looking forward to what we were getting going to get out of the other end there and I think they, they'd think the same for us, they'd say good, you know, that's just where the lay of the land is but it was definitely tough to watch. The riverbanks spilled a slow, wonderful flood across half the station's five and a half thousand square kilometres. Within weeks, Glengyle was transformed. We're in bad drought, as bad as it gets, but there's a big green strip down the middle, about 100 kilometres long and 20 or 30 k's wide, so we've got all our cattle in on that, and that'll last us for another 12, 18 months. The station's herd was down to 400, but new feed meant 9,000 cattle from the north could be trucked in. The unique feature of Channel Country is the myriad of rivulets wriggling across the landscape. In this boom-bust country, horses trump motorbikes. This bottom row here, these are all our working saddles, the ones we use from day to day. The station's hub is the tax shed. I love, love the history and you look around here, we, we go right from the pack saddle days, bronco ropes, right to the latest saddle we've got here, we've got everything in between. Can you imagine spending day after day in the saddle <laughs> on some of the older ones? Those tough old fellas, they must have had hard asses. A good station saddle costs between three and four thousand dollars. A ringer's most important tool, they must be tough, durable and comfortable. Much of Glengyle's gear is made in Stanthorpe in southeast Queensland. Lyle Kent's workshop is one of the largest saddlery business in the country, still crafting leather goods by hand. We really believe hand stitching is the better way to go with belts and bridles and pouches and all those sort of things, yeah. Stronger mm. and better better shape, more style, yeah, that type of thing, yeah. We just, mm. uh, we hope there's a future for it, mm. yeah. I suppose yeah. it's a holding on to a heritage. It's a tradition. Lyle and wife Helen are legends in the station world. Around the Pilbara here, mm. and it is a, it's quite a long distance between places and a big circle there. Head back up through uh, Broome Derby, across here. They take customer service to a new level, driving thousands of kilometres to visit clients. For 29 years, Lyle and Helen have driven their saddlery filled truck up and across the north. It's an incredible journey. How many Ks in how many months? Yeah, about 35,000 Ks, yeah, five months of the year. And we do about 140 stations in that time and pretty well try to stop uh, a station every single night if we can. I think the first time I came on the trip, you know, I'd never been, uh, you know, past the uh, Great Fighting Range, first off, really. And um, just the space, you know, the wide open spaces, and that still, you know, is just amazing to me. You know, you can look out in the landscape, you know, and look across the whole horizon and, and uh, it's, it's just quite amazing. Oh, I just love the country, love cattle stations, love the outback. Yeah, for me, I just love it, yeah. The couple are much loved and station managers, their families and staff look forward to their annual visit, even if all the gear could be ordered online. It's a big thing there, like a, a part of the family, I've grown up with it. Yeah, you've had a pretty dry run across the Barclay. Very tough up north, eh? Yeah. Really tough. 
Riding shotgun is Dachshund Smokey, a little dog with a lot of miles on him. The truck holds everything a ringer could want. A lot of the basic sort of gear, uh, it's like belts and pocket knives and leatherman and carrier gear and butchering gear is a really big thing. Different areas will go for different things. Some places I'll go for whips, others will go for bull straps and horn saws. Steve invited four nearby stations to go shopping. Print this off and I'll get the numbers of a good show. Oh, that's all right. It's a get together. You can have a yarn and chew the fat and run someone down. You know, what do you want to do? Steve's known Lyle for 20 years and it's become a treasured friendship. We've just, you know, talked and caught up every year. I don't think I've ever missed them and, and it's been a pleasure to have them around and, and the, the staff enjoy it. They, there's a bit of a buzz when they turn up and they're happy to spend a bit of money and get some good gear and by this time of the year they've seen what they don't have and, and what some of the better ringers have got and they want to copy them. Lyle's handy on the leather tools. He'll do repairs and if there's a tricky horse to fit, he'll measure it up and custom make a saddle. Selling a rookie ringer his first set of shoeing gear made his night. Oh, shoe puller. Yeah, no, I love it because it really shows that those people that buy that sort of gear are sort of fair dinkum. They want to be in the industry, I think, and that's always a, a real sign, isn't it? You're going to ride in tomorrow. It doesn't happen at every stop, but this visit, someone bought a saddle. Part of the issue with the saddles is they last too long. Mm. So we've got saddles on stations like 25-year-old and they're still going. What number is that? I'll just have to register. And for every saddle sold, the Kent nameplate is put on by Lyle himself. But it's not a Kent event until the team's station photo is taken. You're looking. Right, thank you. We didn't really know where it was going to go, and it's been the best thing we've done in our travels, isn't it? Mm. 2019 Glen Gold photo out of the collection. The photos feature in many station dining rooms around the country. Through the Glengyle Gallery, Steve can see his family growing up. Just incredible how the years go, eh? Hey? Yeah, now you can keep a, a track of the kids and you can watch the kids grow up right through the photos. It was a good night, about $10,000 in sales. After a quick morning smoko break, the Kents are off again. For Lyle, one of the great satisfactions of the repeat visits is seeing young ringers change. Their self-confidence grows and they've really found something that uh, they can do and they enjoy. Hmm. I always say, well, they start to walk and talk with a swagger and just get that sort of, wear all the, you know, the clothes. The Kents are self-sufficient. If there's no roadhouse, they just pull over for a feed. I guess it's been challenging sometimes, hasn't it? I think it's grown our patience and our um, appreciation for each other. And, uh, what we what each of us the part that each of us plays in it. Probably even going back five or six, seven years ago, there was quite a number of people travelling around selling selling wares, you know. And generally not uh, they didn't generally make their own gear. They mostly sort of gear that they would sell as they went. And I think uh, certainly online shopping has had a big impact on that. And now we're pretty well the only one that uh, travels around the stations. Yeah. They're heading to their 123rd station, Morney Plains. It too has come to life after nine years of drought. Well buggered. Even this country around here where we are here near with Homestead and all that is, that was all that was all buggered sort of, you know, like we wouldn't have been run cattle this year. There's a lot of mustering work to be done, moving newly arrived cattle onto the best feed. It's a magic time with a huge range of plants, Craig says, would fatten a crowbar. There's not a bit of feed in the Channel Country that they can't eat. There's, you know, um, there's, it's all, all palatable sort of food. Eh? All, everything's, everything's edible, you know, that's a big thing. And it, and it lasts. It's not like in the north where you get, some of that feed gets bleached and by September, October, there's, there's no goodness left in it. This, country, this, this feed in this country will last through until next year, you know, till Easter. Staff are happy to be busy again, and with the great season, there's good reason to go shopping. They start looking for it from about 
anywhere from April on, I reckon, <laughs> too early in the year. You know, when's Lyle Kent going to be? Because the first thing they do, they walk into the kitchen and they see all the pictures. And then straight away, you know, then they start seeing all the gear that that um, that all the blokes have, dinner hobbles, radio holsters, all got Kent on them, you know, and then they start asking questions. So by the time Lyle gets here this time of the year, you know, they're really keen. Staff only get to town every month or so, so it was a busy night. Everyone always saves up a bit of money because <laughs> they know that they're going to spend a lot of money here. <laughs> yeah, and no, everyone gets really excited for it. Yeah, it's good. After 29 years on the road, next year we'll see the end of an era when Trip 30 is over. The travelling outback settlers have decided to stop. You see a lot of them start and stop and, and don't carry on and Lyle's been there for the, the long haul, eh? Lyle and Helen are back home now, busy as ever, working alongside three of their sons who are adamant they won't be taking over the truck run. Some days I don't know how mum and dad do it, a station a day, and yeah, it's, it's such a full on... Dad's a pretty hard fella and Mum's are real sweet and yeah, they really do blend and bounce off each other and yeah, they're a great team, it's very obvious. Lyle and Helen will miss the hospitality, the friendships and the simplicity of life on the road. But their kids reckon Lyle could do a John Farnham and fail terribly at retirement. Well, yeah. Uh, you've, you've promised, haven't you? I've promised, you? I've promised, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's yeah, on television now. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's cool, that's cool. Yeah. Promise, promise. Yeah, yeah.